Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bible Study for Life, January 10th, 2021. We sure do appreciate you uh, stopping by. Uh, we love you and appreciate you, and we're so grateful and thankful for you. We are praying for you, and if we can do anything else, please let us know. I'd love to minister to you any way that you might need. Uh, so don't t- hesitate to call uh, or come by uh, the church. We'd love to uh, see you, love to uh, help you out any way we uh, possibly can. We are praying for you, and may God continue to do his great and mighty work in your life and through your life. And may it can continue to keep you safe and healthy and well, <clears throat> and may he comfort and encourage you. Uh, and do uh, what only he can do um, uh, for you and, and with you and through you and in you. And so um, we appreciate you so much. I pray that uh, God uses this lesson to, uh, to bless you and to encourage you. I know that it uh, has really encouraged me um, because uh, what uh, the topic is, uh, it seems like I go through it quite frequently. And so this lesson really... Uh, uh, really helped me out, and I, I pray that it, God uses it to help you out as well. Um, so I want to start off with a, another dumb question. Uh, seems like I ask them a lot, but do you ever get down or discouraged? Or the way that the, uh, the author of the lesson puts it, uh, experience the blues? Um, I guess all of us uh, may... Um, experience uh, times of, of being down or, or times of discouragement. Um, I know that it um, seems like the year of 2020 uh, was a time of, of discouragement, uh, feeling down a lot of times, um, maybe even a little worry or stress or panic. Um, but um, it seemed like it was an unusual time. And, and there were those uh, times when... Um, uh, you know, especially when you when we had to uh, uh, seem like we had to stop life for a, a little bit. Uh, it was easy to get down. It was easy to get discouraged, and it kind of took us off guard. Um, but we do go through those times of, of feeling blue or, or down or discouraged, and and so uh, God gives us some uh, scriptures uh, to. Um, to help us out in those times of, of discouragement. Uh, since we live in a fallen world, I, I guess we, uh, we will go through those times of, of feeling depressed or, or discouraged, but they don't have to, to last very long because God does give us um, words in, in the Bible that, that uh, help us in that area. And, and so uh, God uses David to... Uh, to kind of help us uh, deal with those times. Um, And in Psalm 31, 1 through 2, the Bible tells us this, Lord, I seek refuge in you. Let me never be disgraced. Save me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Rescue me quickly. Be a rock of refuge for me, a mountain fortress to save me. So the term refuge, a refuge could refer to a mountain, harbor, or city, but David knew God would provide the only shelter he needed. Nothing and no one else could offer David the protection from disgrace that God provided. And so when we are feeling down or discouraged or um or having feelings of anxiety, or when something comes our way that kind of uh, discourages us, uh, whether it be a situation or a circumstance, or, or, or someone says something or does something that kind of gets us down, uh, we can go to God who is our refuge, who is our strength, who, is, uh, who keeps us safe, who protects us, who we can run to to help us with any situation uh, that we uh, may encounter. Uh, Again, it's so neat to know that that we have a God who sympathizes with us. We have a God who understands us. We have a God who, who knows what we go through. Even before we face it, 
Uh, God knows what, what we're going to face. And so nothing takes him by surprise. And so we can run to him knowing that we can trust him, that we can depend on him, that we can rely on him, even in times of discouragement, even when we feel down or depressed or, or just uh, experience the, the blues, uh, so to speak. God is our, our refuge and, and he uh, can handle anything that, that we encounter. And so he is our, our refuge. He is our, our safe place. And, and David, uh, you know, when he was feeling those times of, of disgrace or discouragement, he ran to God. He realized that God was his, his refuge. He sought after God. Instead of trying to take things in his own hands, instead of running to something else, um, David ran to God and, and allowed God to minister to him and allowed God to, to be his refuge and to be his righteousness. It wasn't anything that, that David could do on his own. Uh, it wasn't David's righteousness. Uh, it wasn't any power or talent that David had he realized that when he was down or when he was frustrated or when he was stressed or when he panicked or when he did wrong, he realized that he needed to run to God because it's, it's God who is his refuge. It's God who is his strength. It's, it's God's righteousness and not ours that, uh, that um, helps us have a right relationship with God. And so just as David realized God was his refuge, God was his safe place, that God understood him, that God was always with him, that God was more powerful than he, in anything that he faced. He realized he could trust God, and so he went to God. He ran to God, who is his refuge. And so we can do the exact same thing. When we have those times of, of feeling down or depressed or discouraged, we can run to God. Um, this lesson, again, has really helped me out tremendously because it seems like every single day, whether it's something I hear or whether it's something I see or whether it's something I do, uh, whether it's something I think about, a lot of times I, I really get um, down and, and, and discouraged. And, and this ha lesson has really helped me out because I'm the type that wants to try to figure it out myself, wants to try to fix it myself, and I can't. And, and so this lesson has been really encouraging to me because God has used it to help me realize that God is my refuge, that I can't do anything within my own self, with my own righteousness, because I don't have any. It, it's all because of Jesus, and it's, it's him that, that I need to run to. It's him that I need to focus on when I am down and, and discouraged and depressed. And so, uh, again, God encouraged us through David to seek after God. We can trust him. He is our, our refuge. Uh, as he um, created the, the big mountains, um, God can be our, our rock. God can be our refuge. And so we can run to him because he, he loves us and he's always with us. It goes on to say in Psalm 31, 3 and 4, For you are my rock and my fortress. You lead me and guide me for your name's sake. You will free me from the net that is secretly set for me, for you are my refuge. And so again, David is, is realizing that God is his refuge, that God is his safe place, that, that God is his rock, that he can um, rely on God, that God is much stronger and more powerful than anything that David faces. And so he can run to God. He can, can go to God, and God is, is there for him. You know, David kind of went through an uh, up-and-down season. Uh, we know that, that uh, David uh, took care of the, the sheep. Uh, you know, that was his, his job. Uh, that was, you know, what his father had him do. 
And we know that he did an excellent job at taking care of the sheep. And so uh, as he took care of the sheep, you know, I'm sure that he uh, spent a lot of time communicating with God. As he's watching the sheep, uh, you know, talking to God and, and seeing some, some parallels between David taking care of the sheep and, and God being his shepherd and God being our shepherd, God guiding us and taking care of us. And so we see that, that David had an intimate relationship with God. We see that, uh, you know, David is described as uh, a man after God's own heart. And so we know that, that David and God had a tight relationship. And, and we see this in, in a lot of songs that we read and a lot of things that we read in, in uh, 1 Samuel that, that David wanted to follow after, after God. Uh, David wanted to be close to God. David saw that, that God was his rock and that God was his, his refuge, that God was you know, the, the perfect place that he needed to be in life, was in the presence of God. And so uh, you know, David uh, went through uh, you know, times of intimacy with God. And, and when he faced Goliath, Again, it wasn't something that he was scared of. It wasn't something that he had lack of faith. It wasn't something that he ran from. It was, you know, he wanted to uh, make sure that, that the name of God was honored uh, and praised and that uh, nobody was going to disrespect God. Nobody was going to disrespect God's people. And so David uh, knew God and knew that God was his rock and that God was his refuge and that, God, that David could trust God and so David was, was willing to face Goliath because he knew that God was with him. And instead of, you know, being discouraged because of how big Goliath appeared to be, David was encouraged because he knew God and knew that God was more powerful than Goliath. And so God used David to defeat Goliath. And the nation of Israel saw the power of God and, and saw that God was, was more powerful than anything that that they could face as well. And so, uh, you know, as David continued to grow, we see that, uh, you know, even when Saul was trying to kill him, he still remained close to God and trusted God and relied on God. And, and even though David had uh, two separate times where he could have killed Saul, again, he realized that Saul was still God's anointed. And that he was going to let God take care of Saul. And he wasn't going to do anything to harm Saul because he wanted to respect God and honor God and please God. And then we see as he continued to grow that we, we read about his uh, um, committing adultery with Bathsheba. And we read where he um, had made sure that her husband was going to be killed. And, and it's like a, a different man that we're reading about here. And so I'm sure that at that time, he was really depressed or, or down and discouraged. But again, in Psalm 51, he cries out to God. And he says, Be gracious to me, God, according to your faithful love, according to your abundant compassion. Psalm 51.1. And so uh, again, David messed up. David sinned greatly against God. David sinned greatly against Bathsheba and her husband. David sinned against the nation of Israel. But again, David went to God and, and allowed God to change him, allow God to forgive him, allow God to minister to him. And so it was through that time that he realized God was his righteousness, that God was his rock that God was his refuge, that God was someone he could trust and depend on. And even though he had times of, of uh, great joy, even though he had times of, of uh, doing great things for God, he also had those times where he uh, sinned against God and against uh, others. But one of the reasons why some say that he was characterized as a man after God's own heart, that when he messed up, he ran to God. When uh, God used him to accomplish great things, he ran to God to thank him. And so, uh, again, through the ups and downs of 
David's life, he realized God was his rock, that God was his fortress, that God was his guide. In the same way for us, when we might be down or discouraged or feeling blue, again, we can run to God, and God is always there for us because he loves us and wants to wants us to experience his best. And so when we are ha having joyous occasions, when we are feeling down in the dumps, we can run to God because he is our, our rock. He is our foundation. He is our life. He is our joy. He is our peace. He is our fortress. He understands what we go through. He understands what we're feeling. You know, there's some times in my life that, that I think, you know, God, how can you put up with me because of all the struggles internally and mentally that, that I experience? But again, God cares deeply for us, and, and he cares what we go through. Um, and, and, and so we can rely and trust in God. Uh, because he is our refuge, because he is our fortress, because he is our strength, he is our, our rock, we can depend on him. Oswald Chambers says this, when you are in the dark, listen, and God will give you a very precious message. Again, when you are in the dark, listen, and God will give you a very precious message. So when we're feeling down, we don't have to concentrate on what God is feeling this way. We can focus on who God is, what he can do for us, how we can trust him, and that we can, uh, that he is our life, he is our joy, he is our peace, he is our strength, he is our refuge, he is our fortress, he understands us, and so we can go to him. Uh, and that can encourage us, knowing that we can depend on God and trust in Him. And then lastly, in Psalm 31, 5 through 8, the Bible tells us this, Into your hand I entrust my spirit. You have redeemed me, Lord, God of truth. <clears throat> I will rejoice and be glad in your faithful love because you have seen my affliction. You know the troubles of my soul and have not handed me over to the enemy. You have set my feet in a spacious place. And so David is, is entrusting uh, his spirit. He's entrusting his whole life in God's hands. Uh, he realizes that's the best place for his life to be. Every aspect of life, he's giving it all over to God. He's placing his, his life his spirit, his soul, his uh, mind, um, his body. He's placing it all in God's hands because he knows that's the best place for his life to be is in the hands of God, allowing God to lead him and guide him um, and take care of him. Uh, and, and so, you know, he, we also read in Luke uh, that Jesus prayed a similar prayer when he was uh, being crucified on the cross. When he was hanging on the cross, one of the things that he says is this, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And so, again, Jesus uh, kind of echoed what David said. God, uh, I commit my spirit to you. I entrust my, my spirit, my will uh, my mentality, my attitude, my life, all in your hands. You are the creator of life. You are the creator of me. And so uh, when I place myself in your hands for you to be in control of, that's the best place for it to be. And so, uh, again, when David uh, was, going, uh, was going through the, the times of, of being chased by enemies or uh, times of, of chaos or uncertainty or, or when, uh, <clears throat> when he was having family issues. Again, he went to God 
realized that God was his life, that God was his strength, that God was his refuge, his fortress, his shield, his protection. God was always there for him. God was always there with him. It's the same way for our lives. Um, God is always with us. And so since he created us, since he cares for us, since his love is always faithful, we can entrust our whole entire life in God's hands because he created our lives. And that's the best place for our lives to be is in the hands of God. So we can trust God uh, no matter what. Uh, and again, when we're down uh, or discouraged, we can, can run to God being focused on, on how much he loves us and how he understands us and how he is, is more powerful than anything that we encounter. It's, uh, the author says this, we know we're truly trusting God when our trust leads us to praise him. When David penned these words, he hadn't yet experienced the rescue he sought. But he trusted and knew God would deliver. You know, that's pretty neat is that even though he wasn't fully de delivered uh, when he prayed this, again, he praised God. He lifted God's name up. He honored God and, and pleased God. Even though he didn't know exactly what would happen, he praised God. You know, that kind of reminds me of, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they went and they knew that God could protect them from the fire, uh, they knew that God was more powerful than the fire, they knew God, worshiped God, and they were only going to worship God. They were only going to um, live for God. And, and so they weren't concerned with what the fire was going to do. They were more concerned with making sure God was honored and worshipped and that they were going to follow him and him alone. And so they were willing to go through the fire of uncertainty knowing that God was God and no one else was. And they, they were going to worship God no matter what. Well, we know the rest of the story. We know that the God protected them from the fire. But they didn't know exactly if he would they were willing to go through the fire um, knowing that they could trust God, knowing that God was their refuge and strength and fortress, that he was their righteousness. And so, uh, again, they weren't focused necessarily on the fire, but they were focused on God. And God went through the fire with them and uh, carried them through to the other side and kept them alive. And, and I love that story because when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. I mean, we have a powerful God. And so when we're down, when we're discouraged, when we uh, feel like we can't go any further, uh, when uh, things get us down or discouraged from the news or in the world today, it's, it's, it's discouraging. I, I do know that it is. But again, we have a God that that nothing takes by surprise. And we have the one true God that, that we worship and that we serve. And so we can run to him because he understands us, because he cares for us, and because he, he loves us. And so when we're feeling down, we can concentrate on God and, and realize that he is our, our rock. We can depend on him. He is our, our refuge and our fortress. We don't have to run to anything to try to forget. We can run to God, and, and he can help us with anything that we encounter. And we can entrust our lives with him because he created us and because he cares. He goes on to say, David could rejoice and be glad in, in, your faith, in God's faithful love for four reasons. Number one, he mentioned, you have seen my affliction. Again, God, God sees us. God recognizes us. God knows what we go through. He, he sees us. And, and he's always with us. And so uh, we can be joyful because God uh, has seen our affliction. You know, just like the, the Egyptians 
you know, sometimes the Egyptians probably wondered, does God uh, see what we go through? God does see what we go through. He sees our affliction and he cares. Uh, number two, you know the troubles of my soul. Again, he knows the discouragements that we face. Um, he, he's, he's there to help us through those discouragements. Number three, you have not handed me over to the enemy. Uh, again, God protected him from Saul. God protected him from Absalom. God protected him from, from other enemies that were chasing him to try to kill him. And, and God will, will take care of us. Um, and then fourthly, you have set my feet in a spacious place. Again, we can be, our foundation is Jesus Christ. Um, hopefully our life is founded on the word of God, and that we follow it, that we obey it, that we honor God and live the way that he wants us to live. You know, God gives us some great, uh, two other verses that are really uh, great to put into practice and to think about. And it's uh, 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares on him because he cares about you. God cares about us. He cares about us individually. He cares about his church. Uh, he cares about what we go through. And so because he cares, we can cast all our anxiety, our, our worry, uh, our panic, our frustration, our stress. We can cast all our discouragement uh, to God because he cares and he will, will help us. We may not be taken out of discouraging times, but uh, even though we may go through them, God is going through them with us. And he understands what discouragement times look like. He was um, betrayed. He was denied. He was rejected. He was crucified. He was made fun of. But still, he stayed focused on God. He stayed focused on God's plan. And he was victorious. He can help us be victorious too. Even in times of discouragement, God is carrying us through. And he cares. And he will help us. And then Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and through 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Jesus says, come to me. I know you're going through some, some stressful times, some tough times, but come to me. Call to me. I want you to run into my arms and let, so that I can let you know that I am your rock, that I am your fortress, that I am your deliverer, that I am your refuge, that I am your safe place. And so even though we may go through discouraging times, even though we may uh, get down quite a bit or go through the blues, so to speak, we can run to God. He can handle it. We can pray to him no matter what because he loves us faithfully. He is always with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. God really cares about us, and he wants us to bring everything to him. He wants us to call to him and come to him because he's with us and cares about us. And so when we feel down or discouraged, no matter what kind of frustration or emotion we might be going through, we can take it all to God because he cares deeply for each and every one of us. So we may, may we stay focused on, on God being our refuge. We can always trust him because he cares. So when you're feeling down, run to God. When you're feeling discouraged, run to God. When you're feeling joyful, run to God because he loves you and cares for you, and understands you. And he can help us with, with anything and everything that we go through. Run to God. It's the best place to be. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Stay focused on that.
not necessarily how we feel. Stay faithful to God, knowing that He wants the best for us because He loves us and cares for us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your love and your care. Thank you for being our refuge and our rock and our fortress. Thank you for being our security. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that when we uh, feel down or, or depressed or discouraged, that we will run to you, that we will bring it all to you, knowing that you care for us and we can trust you and rely on you. Lord, help us stay focused on, on who you are and what you are capable of doing. We just thank you for always being with us in your care. Be with each one. Continue to remind them how much you love them and that they are very valuable to you. And we appreciate and love them so much. Keep them safe and healthy and well. Uh, take care and minister to them, Father. And we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us. We do love you and appreciate you so much. We are praying for you. If we can do anything else, please let us know. But may God continue to provide for you and take care of you and keep you safe and healthy and well. And again, we appreciate you so much. If we can do anything, let us know. May God bless you.